In the previous lesson of this simplified regular expression course, we looked at meta characters, which is made up of the backward slash and a character. And this combination has a special meaning. In the previous lesson, we looked at the white space meta character for matching white spaces, the non white space meta character for matching non white spaces. We also looked at digit meta character, word meta character, and so on. And in this lesson, we'll be looking at the word boundary meta character. Like I mentioned in the previous lesson, I thought to do this particular lesson for word boundaries because word boundaries can be a bit hard to understand. But don't worry, stay with me. I got you. Now, I want to first say that when it comes to the word boundary meta character, some languages or regex engines may do it differently than others. But I'm going to explain how the word boundary meta character works in most languages. A word boundary meta character is made up of the backward slash and the B later. So first off, let's understand what a word boundary is. Because a word boundary meta character is supposed to represent a word boundary, right? Just like the digit meta character represents digits. So a word boundary can be four Things. The first thing is a word boundary is the boundary at the beginning of your string. The second thing is a word boundary is the boundary at the end of your string. And also note that for a word boundary to be at the beginning of your string, the string has to begin with a word character. And for a word boundary to be at the end of your string, the end also has to be a word character. As we proceed in this lesson, I'll explain what this means. Now this is where things get interesting. The third thing is a word boundary is the boundary between a word character and a non-word character. In the previous lesson, we saw that word characters includes letters, digits, and the underscore symbol. Every other symbol and white spaces are non-word characters. So the boundary between a word character and a non-word character in a string is a word boundary. And the fourth places you can find word boundaries is the other way around. So the boundary between a non-word character and a word character is a word boundary. Let's look at the four of them again. The first one, the word boundary, is the boundary at the beginning of your string. Secondly, a word boundary is the boundary at the end of your string. Third, a word boundary is the boundary between a word character and a non-word character. And fourth, a word boundary is the boundary between a non-word character and a word character. Now, if this doesn't still make sense, don't worry, we're gonna look at examples. Take a look at this string on the screen. The string says, his name is Dillion. Can you identify the word boundaries in this string? Don't worry, let's check out the Regex website. So like I said, we have this string, his name is Dillion. And then let's say we have the backward slash B, which is the word boundary. And here we only get one word boundary. So let me put my global flag so that I can see all the word boundaries. Now, what do you notice in this string? At the beginning here, the first match, we have a word boundary, which like I said, is the beginning of a string. Also, there is a word boundary before H at the beginning of the string because H is a word character. If there was a non-word character at the beginning of the string, then there wouldn't be a word boundary at the beginning of the string. As you can see at the end here, we also have another match, which is a word boundary at the end of a string. Just like with the beginning of the string, there is a word boundary at the end of the string in this case, because N, which ends the string, is a word character. If it was a non-word character that ended the string, then there won't be a word boundary at the end of the string. Now, when we look into this string, we can see a word boundary after the character S. Why is that the case? Because between S and the white space, there is a boundary. S is a word character. The white space is a non-word character. And like I explained, a word boundary is the boundary between a word character and a non-word character. In this case, S is the word character and the white space is the non-word character. And we have a boundary. We also see a boundary at the beginning of N. And why is that the case? Because we have a space, which is a non-word character. And then we have the letter N, which is a word character. And the boundary between that space and N is a word boundary. We can also see a word boundary at the end of E for the same reason. We see a word boundary beginning I, end of S, and also beginning of D. So you can see how word boundaries here are beginning of string, end of string, between word and non-word characters, and between non-word characters and word characters. Now if I come to this example where it says his name is Dillion and then I put a hyphen and then I say Dillion Megida, you can also see that there is a word boundary between the letter N and the hyphen. Why is that the case? Because the hyphen is a non-word character and 
n is a word character so the boundary between n and that hyphen between the word character and the non-word character is a boundary so i hope this explanation of word boundaries makes sense to you word boundaries can be very useful in the patterns that you write for example you can have a word boundary like this and then maybe you have a pattern let's say we have a pattern like is and then we have another word boundary what do you think this means by looking at the rejects website well it means that where can you find a word boundary full followed by is followed by another word boundary if we take out these word boundaries for example let's just say we have is you can see that there are two matches we have the is in his and we have the is which is here but if we put a word boundary here and we put a word boundary here well let's even take one of the word boundaries if we put one word boundary at the end what does it mean it means where do you find an i followed by an s followed by a word boundary here we have i followed by s followed by a word boundary because the word boundary here is the boundary between s and the space also here we have i followed by s followed by a word boundary which is the boundary between the s and the space but now watch what happens when i put a word boundary before is now what does this mean where do you find a word boundary followed by i followed by s followed by another word boundary you can see this one is no longer a match why because there is no word boundary between h and I. A word boundary is between a word character and a non-word character. But in this case, between H and I, what we actually have is a word character. H is a word character. I is a word character. But as you can see in this other place here, it's a match because we have a boundary between the space and the letter i after that boundary we have i then we have s and then between s and this other space we have another word boundary so is is a match so what do you see here you can use two word boundaries to match specific words instead of doing something like maybe backward slash s which is the meta character for white spaces instead of doing something like this because as you can see here we are actually matching the space with the is followed by another space what you can just do is use the word boundary and now we have boundary is then another boundary now if we come back to this h and let's say we replace this h with nothing you can see we have this as a match why is that the case because like i mentioned word boundaries can also be found at the beginning of a string so because this is beginning a string you can see that we have is matched now let's say i put an hyphen is is still match why because between the hyphen and the letter i there is a word boundary hyphen is a non-word character letter i is a word character another thing you notice here is that the beginning of the string is not a word boundary remember i said the beginning of a string can only be a word boundary if the string actually begins with a word character in this case the string begins with a non-word character which is the hyphen symbol and that does not classify as a word boundary so do not forget word boundaries can only be at the beginning or end of a string if the beginning or end of the string are word characters now watch what happens when i put underscore when I put underscore, it's no longer a match. Why? Because word characters include letters, digits, and also the underscore symbol. So between this underscore symbol and this I, there is no boundary. Because the underscore is a word character, I is a word character, you cannot find word boundaries in between that. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have a string like, the man said he is a good kind of human, but I do not believe that. And let's say we want to match A. Now by typing A, you can see we have multiple matches of A, right? We have A in man, A in said, A here, A in human, and A in that. What if we want to match the A that is standing alone? Well, we can use the word boundaries here. So first I can say a word boundary followed by A. And by doing this, I already get a match. But the reason why this pattern is not 100% accurate is, let's say I have another string at the end here that says, but I do not believe that and I I am correct so you can see that because we have a word boundary between the space and a this is also matched this is matched and this is matched but we actually want the a that is standing alone well here we can use another word boundary to ensure that after that a there is also another boundary so by putting backward slash b you can see that the only a that is now matched is the a that begins with the word boundary between the space and a and also ends with a word boundary which is between a 
and the white space. Like I said, you can use word boundaries to create even interesting regular expressions where you're able to assert that a word has boundaries. Maybe those boundaries can be white spaces, it can be hyphens, it can be other non-word characters. I hope this explanation makes sense. Let me know in the comments below if this simplified the concept of word boundaries for you. Like I also mentioned in the previous lesson, meta characters are different from special characters. So what we'll be looking at in the next lesson of this course is special characters in regular expressions.